Hey everyone, welcome back. Great to see ya. You've probably heard of this Bitcoin thing. Magic internet money that's gonna cast its spell on the whole world. If only its transactions didn't take so long to finalize. Oh, and the fees weren't so high. That'd be glorious. Well, I'm here today to let you in on a little secret. Bitcoin is not too slow. It can scale. And yes, you will be using it in the future. I'm here to tell you how. Abra Kadabra. Bitcoin. The word conjures up fear in all coiners' hearts. It's the original gangster, the grand poobah. Well, with all of its positives, there is one thing that makes it kind of lackluster, especially for that pesky thing called payments. It's, yeah, how can I say it? It's kind of slow. Yes, Bitcoin, the world renowned MVP of cryptocurrency. It has a speed problem. It's transactions per second, or TPS as some would say, comes in at a wimpy seven. What? How can this be? I thought this was supposed to be the future of money. This is because every single Bitcoin transaction on the network must be broadcast to every single node within the network. Once they are broadcasted, the transactions need to reach final settlement on the Bitcoin blockchain, with the Bitcoin blockchain creating new blocks about every 10 minutes and the blocks being limited in size, this can be kind of time consuming. Also, with a limited number of transactions that can be settled per block, fees are prone to rising substantially as everyone is fighting to get their transactions confirmed. This can be quite a problem. So that seven TPS that Bitcoin currently clocks is mind-numbingly slow, especially to say Ethereum that's 15 to 20 TPS or Cardano. We're not even going to go there. But there's something special about Bitcoin that's lurking under the surface. Or should I say, on top of the surface. It's second layer, the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is a second layer protocol that sits on top of the Bitcoin network. It was conceived by Joseph Poon and Thaddeus Dreya in 2015 and used the concept of payment channels to help combat the scalability issues surrounding Bitcoin. Mainly the speed of on-chain Bitcoin transactions but also the cost of those transactions. If you're wondering what on-chain means, it's simply a Bitcoin transaction that occurs on the main Bitcoin blockchain. Are you all still with me? No? Well, how about this? Gold is a layer one money. It holds all of the qualities of a good form of money. It's scarce, durable, fungible. It's pretty darn groovy. Well, it is lacking in one quality, a kind of important one, and that's portability. The sheer weight of gold makes people shudder at the thought of having to carry large quantities of it around. Ugh, but wait, what if we could use something in its place? Like a paper receipt instead? Yes, yes. That would be much easier. We originally started out using paper receipts that simply represented the gold that someone held in a bank. People trusted that they could take this paper receipt to the bank and exchange it for gold. Eventually, these paper receipts evolved into our currencies, such as the US dollar. Now, it's important to realize that we are no longer on a gold standard. Our currencies aren't backed by anything at all. I would love to delve into why this is a problem, but that's for another video. For now, just keep in mind the history of our currencies and how they came to be. We could say that gold's weight caused it to centralize. Instead, people would use these paper receipts, which would represent the amount of gold that they had stored in a bank, so that they didn't have to carry around a heavy metal with them all day. These paper receipts are theoretically a layer two, which is sitting on top of gold, a layer one. We transact in paper currencies because it is faster and simpler than transacting in layer one gold. Bitcoin and the Lightning Network function in much the same way as gold and paper currency. Bitcoin is the layer one. Like gold, it has characteristics of a sound money. It's durable, it's scarce, and it's fungible. Bitcoin selects for security and decentralization, unlike gold that tends to get gummed up in bank vaults. Because of this choice to optimize for security and decentralization, there are some trade-offs. Mainly the transaction speed. 
with those 10 minute block times that we talked about earlier, but also with the fees associated with the transactions, as those fees are free to go as high as they need to. Those two points alone make it difficult for on-chain Bitcoin payments, especially for smaller everyday purchases. Thus, the Lightning Network was thought of to relieve Bitcoin of these payment duties. Instead of optimizing for security and decentralization, it selects for speed and low cost. Up to speed a little more? I hope so. But stay with me because we're about to take a deep dive. So far, we understand that the Lightning Network is on top of the main Bitcoin blockchain, but how are the two intertwined? Well, Lightning does happen to actually use Bitcoin transactions. The network works by setting up a payment channel between two separate parties. This is called a funding transaction. Both parties fund the channel with on-chain Bitcoin, creating an on-chain agreement between the two. These funds are the maximum channel capacity. You cannot spend more than the total of these funds combined. This funding transaction, the initial channel between two parties, requires something called a multi-signature address. And that means that at least two signatures are going to be needed to move the Bitcoin that is associated with that address. So for example, in a two of two multi-signature address, you would need both people, two people, to sign for that money and agree to spend the money that is associated with that address. Basically, nobody can just run away with all of the money. The system is trustless. In this payment channel on the Lightning Network, only the first and the last transactions are put on the Bitcoin blockchain. All of the other transactions between the opening and the closing transaction will happen off chain, meaning off the Bitcoin blockchain. These transactions between the first and the last are called commitment transactions. They are not limited by the Bitcoin protocol's fees or transactions per second. So you can send until your heart is content. Yippee! You can think of this as opening a tab at the bar. Instead of paying for each drink that you have throughout the night, which takes forever and costs the establishment fees from the credit card company, you instead open up a tab, aka a payment channel. Then after you order each drink, your tab is updated. At the end of the night, you settle up with the bartender and you pay your one lump sum, covering each of the drinks that you've had throughout the night. Closing your bar tab is similar to closing your payment channel in the Lightning Network. With Lightning Network, payments can be routed through multiple channels to any of its network participants. So, say for instance you needed to send a payment to someone, but you didn't have a direct channel set up with them already. You would still be able to route through the network to another participant. This is all done through some pretty serious cryptography, and it's pretty darn complex, but this is where the Lightning Network really shines. The network speed enables something called micropayments. You could literally stream a podcast or a movie and pay in real time. Say, maybe every minute you pay 10 Satoshis instead of a monthly subscription of $15 for a bunch of stuff that you never watch or listen to. You now have the ability to only pay for what you consume. Or think about this. What if at your job you got paid for every minute that you worked or every hour that you worked? instead of once every two weeks. This would be a total game changer. This technology has applications everywhere. As we continue to progress with the Lightning Network, we have seen its usage increase substantially. More and more people are realizing its potential benefits and want to be part of this groundbreaking payment network that's built on top of Bitcoin. As of now, currently, there are around 36 thousand nodes running on the Lightning Network, and it has a capacity of about 3,600 Bitcoin. And these numbers are continually growing. There are many wallets out there if you're itching to interact with this network, both custodial and non-custodial options, meaning you either can control the private keys yourself, or you can give the private keys to someone else or another company to hold on to them for you. Some of the best are Strike, Blue Wallet, Cash App, and Moon Wallet. Let's take Strike for example. They are a custodial wallet, meaning they will hold on to the private keys of your cryptocurrency. You simply need to download the app, follow all the prompts for know your customer and anti-money laundering, and then once you're approved, fund it with some Bitcoin. It might take some time for this to confirm as it is coming from the kind of slow layer one Bitcoin network. But once confirmed, you'll have a payment channel to send Bitcoin through the Lightning Network to anyone in the world. It's a completely open network, meaning anyone can contribute to it. 
there are no gatekeepers to dictate the rules of this game, like Visa or your MasterCard. One important thing to note is that the QR codes for the Lightning Network are different than the main Bitcoin blockchain QR codes. Some of the newer wallets like Moon Wallet make it pretty easy to go back and forth between the Lightning Network and the main chain. But if you're ever having a problem sending Bitcoin to an address and it's not working, it's probably because your address is incompatible and you're on one network when you're trying to be on another. The future is bright. With the Lightning Network, you can transact in a limited amount of times at much faster speeds and at a effectively zero cost. If this isn't an impressive, I don't know what is. In a very similar way that people stopped carrying around with them physical gold, I imagine that it's going to be a thing in the past that people stop transacting frequently with on-chain Bitcoin. Instead, I envision that all of us will have lightning wallets installed on our phones so that we can make everyday smaller transactions. We are already seeing this in places like El Salvador where citizens are doing this very thing to send and receive Bitcoin. This technology is constantly progressing, and that's why it's so important to stay up to date. Well, that's all for me. I'll see you all next video. Adios.